Max Trax Pro CE Setups. Following the checklist in the Getting Started Workbook, you'll see there are six areas in Max Trax Pro CE that need to be set up before you write your first repair order, nine if you're using the accounting in the system. First, we have to set up the company information, then the repair order and parts invoice setup. Next, we have workstation and miscellaneous information setup, and very important, sales tax rates. Security groups if you plan to password protect certain areas of the system, and employees and employee permissions. Just the basics in this section, though, to be able to add a technician's initials to a job and give them a login and password. And for accounting users, fiscal year start date, default account postings, and product codes. So let's get started. Under Setups from the menu bar, we'll select Company Information from the drop list. And here, our company name is the name that displays on the computer and prints on our reports. The print name, address, city, and first phone number, as well as comment line 1 and 2, is what prints on your actual repair orders. Now, until we have set up your employees and their employee permissions, you'll want to keep this box checked, which turns off the system security. We're going to select the type of accounting system that we're going to use. We can select either None, Max Tracks, or Exporting to QuickBooks. And this is where we select the default report printer. We can always uncheck the Use Windows default and select a printer from the drop list. By clicking on the blue underlined links on the left, we can access the various sections of the company information setup. Under Marketing, these are the Send Parameter defaults that you can set up, and these are used to select what day to send your marketing letters or postcards. Under Printing Defaults, we can select the paper sizes for your marketing letters and postcards, labels, and also our computer checks. We can select a check in the middle or a check on top, and you'll notice these numbers are the deluxe ordering numbers. Under Display, we have the beginning of the workday and end of workday, as well as the time increments. And these are used to set the date and time for your appointments. You can set the increments to as little as five minutes. And if you click Time Increment Test, it will display your different options. I just leave mine at 30. And Default Repair Order Promise Time, this is what will print on your repair order if you select this feature, and this is required in some states. I have it set to refresh my schedule and my parts invoice list every 10 seconds to keep everybody in the shop on track. And these are the amount of hours available for appointments per day to be used with the Appointment Calendar feature. Here we have the Job Clock Setup options. And I do synchronize the date and time of all my workstations with the data server so all of our appointments and reports are running on the same time. And last in this section is under Vehicles. And if you check this box, the Automotive Aftermarket Industry Association number, or AAIA number, is assigned to each vehicle in the system so your online parts ordering websites know which vehicle you have on a particular open RO when you access their websites. Let's click OK and go to the Repair Order and Parts Invoice Setup. So from the Setups on the menu bar, select Repair Orders and Parts Invoices. And here we select our shop rates. The average labor cost per hour is used to calculate your profitability on your repair orders. By clicking Calculate a Month, you can manually enter your expenses. After you've used the system for a while, you can calculate your flat rate hours and parts profit by actually looking at some of the activity in your system. Miscellaneous charges, and this is shop supply in most shops, is applied to the entire repair order or the entire parts invoice. They can be set as a percentage of parts or a percentage of labor with a maximum. And you can change the description if you like and select whether or not it's taxable and decide which product code this should be tracked under. Most shops just use a miscellaneous supply default. Now add-on charges are added to individual parts or labors, and I actually have hazardous materials as one of mine, as well as freight. Under labor, I also have one for tech services because I have an add-on charge if I ever use Identifix or the AC Delco tech line, and I just pass this charge on to the customer. Under RO setups, we have lots of options as to what prints and what prompts us throughout the system. Now this is a pretty important section of the program 
lots of features you can choose from. Let's go over them briefly. We can choose to print our technician certifications on our ROs if they're selected for that RO. We can print revisions, which of course is required in some states, and labor service hours or not. For Canadian shops, we have print tax breakdown. And we can select to show notes by default on a printed RO, which we can of course uncheck at the RO level. Check mileage in and out, so we would actually have two entries on our RO for mileage and print promise date, which again is required in some states. We can be prompted to make a revision if there's a change in the estimate and let us know if there are not technicians assigned to a labor. We can choose to pay commissions before a discount and confirm average mileage to confirm with the customer that we are calculating the average mileage according to their driving habits. We can choose not to print part numbers on the RO and prompt us to ask for a new appointment when we are paying out that final repair order. When you start a repair order, we have a couple of pieces of information we typically ask. Mileage, technicians assigned to the job, and customer source. You can select to have these prompted or not, and we can choose when to have this information entered. Repair order printer setup, again, typically a default, but we can always uncheck this and select a particular printer. And for most states, we have the default repair order invoice style. You'll note that for a couple of states, there are some customizations that are made to meet their requirements. Repair order number format setup. This was our starting repair order number. And if you want to add a prefix or a suffix, we can set them up here. Select whether or not we like to track our sublet statuses. And default for old parts. This prints in red on both the ROs, the final invoices, and our technician worksheets, and can be selected from within the RO, but I have it selected to default to always discard old parts. And last in this section, one of my favorite features, is assign a marketing letter to send when paying the RO. I can say don't ask, ask me, or always assign a marketing letter when you're closing out the RO. Under RO disclaimers, you can change the estimate disclaimer from the standard default. And these are various signature disclaimers at print. You have an option to print the disclaimer at the end of the repair order rather than the upper left if you have a custom logo that goes a full width of the RO. And you can customize your warranty right here. Restock setup is where we can enter our starting purchase order number and again a prefix or suffix. And online integration just allows us to send our information to Carfax. Under Inventory Setup, this is where we choose to track our inventory and to track costs, which is very critical if you're using the accounting portion of the system. You can select whether or not to track your inventory. And if you do, you can add catalog parts from online ordering to the inventory list, as well as buyout parts to the inventory list. And this is very useful to be able to track where you purchased the part, who you sold it to, very valuable tool. We can require placeholders to be replaced with an actual part number on your repair order to be able to track our inventory and make sure our costs are in place. Under the Cost on Repair Orders and Parts Invoices section, we can select to be prompted to enter costs for buyouts, parts, and sublets. Now the price matrix can be selected for new and catalog parts and for buyouts, however we can always have an override. This just ensures that our matrix is applied automatically, which of course we can override at any time. And I do have it set to reset my base parts cost at purchase so that if a price of a part goes up, I have the opportunity to price my parts based on the last cost. Under physical inventory, we can define how our worksheets print out. And under the parts invoice setup, we enter our starting parts invoice number with prefix or suffix if we like. Include the prompt to enter a customer source when we write a parts invoice. And we can select if we don't want to print those part numbers on that part invoice and designate a specific parts printer. Again, we have a section for disclaimers and warranties. Quote setup. We can set these quotes up to expire after a certain time frame. And we can view expired quotes under the vehicle record. And we have this starting quote number. Tech worksheets can be directed to a particular printer, and we can select whether or not we want that customer name to print on that tech worksheet or not. And our last is defaults. And these are new record defaults. So when you create a new labor service, a new part or sublet, we can default it as taxable or not taxable. 
And here we can link flat and build rate laborers together, and this ensures that our technicians who are paid on flat rate are always getting credit for all the build hours that they do. This is where our profit monitor is set up, and we do need to have a target profit percentage for the repair orders for our green or red dots to show up on our profit monitor. And we can choose to include in this profit calculation for that profit monitor to include cores, sublets, supply charges, or those add-on user charges. And here for kits, we can select to have all sub items selected, which sometimes it's easier just to uncheck one or two items instead of checking all of the ones in the kit. So under Setups, click on this workstation and select Printing and Miscellaneous Info from the side drop list. And here's just the name of our computer, and we can select to use different departments if we have more than one cash drawer. And these are important. I like this feature a lot. Low inventory and purchase warning setups. I select to warn me if I have a part on an RO that needs to be ordered. So this helps me use a purchase order wizard that is integrated into the repair order workflow. I also like to be warned if I have a part that's been ordered but not put on that RO, and this ensures that we don't leave any parts off that we actually put on the vehicle. Miscellaneous setups is where we can select to print a technician worksheet every time you print out the RO, which of course we can always uncheck from the print prompt. We can choose not to display the tips and hints in Max Tracks, and very important for the World Pack online ordering, you do have to check to enable it on this one particular workstation. And under Printer Setup, you can direct each part of the system to print on a particular printer. Here is where we set up alignment, and if you use a dot matrix, you can set it up here. Now, very important, as I mentioned, was sales tax. Under Setups and Accounting and Payroll, we have sales tax rates. Just double click on the default sales tax, enter in your sales tax rates, and you can change the description if you like. These other tax types are used for the Canadian shops who have to actually print out the different tax types on their invoices. And we can add a tax rate if we need to put in a government tax rate in the system. Now if you're going to use security, you'll want to select security groups. And the system does come set up with four groups as a default. Let's click on administrators. Now there should always be one person in the company who is designated as an administrator and every feature should be checked on this list. By highlighting an item on the list, you can activate the right click and this allows you to grant permission or remove permission from that individual feature. You can grant all or choose to just grant all in this one particular group it makes this process a little bit faster. And if you click on members on the left, this will let you know all of the people that are designated as an administrator in the system. Now the next step is to go to each employee under payroll, select your employee list, and each employee on the list needs to have as a minimum their name, their employee code, and password, and here is where we select their security group. One other area to select before you write your first RO is under miscellaneous. Select if this employee is a technician or a service writer, so their name will appear on the list when you go to select your technician or your service writer. Specifically for users who are planning on using the accounting in the system, we have just a few other areas under Setups, in Accounting and Payroll, go into Fiscal Year Start Date and just enter your Fiscal Year Start Day and Start Month. Most people are January 1st. And two other areas are the Default Account Posting. Now let me just start by saying 95% of shops just let all of this go to the default. This is actually where a lot of the magic in the system takes place because so much of what you do is automated in the background. But we've grouped by category what happens in the background in the system and what accounts those transactions flow to. Now you'll notice in some of the categories we can assign a GL account number that's different from the system default. And notice under cash payout disbursements and miscellaneous income disbursements, we can actually add some transaction types. We also have the payroll wages where it flows in the system, user definable ones that you can edit, as well as the deductions. These are where they flow in the system automatically. Note here you can only change the general ledger account number, but under the user definable payroll deductions we can also edit the description as well as the account number. 
And our last section to set up under accounting and payroll is our product codes. Now we can set up individual product codes for parts, labor, sublet, and those add-on charges. Let's take a look at this. Notice I added freight and I added hazardous waste as some of my add-on charges, so I gave them individual product codes. Another product code that I added under parts was tires. I actually have this going to different general ledger accounts. And most shops do just let this go to the default general inventory or general labor. But keep in mind any changes that you make may affect some of the default reports in the system. And this concludes the lesson on MaxTracks Pro CE Setups.